Welcome to Pastor Bill's Classroom. We are in our study of the Corinthian Letters, Lesson 47, entitled, And in the Body Experience, Part 8. Hello, welcome back to our midweek study. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We spent a um, number of sessions together talking about spiritual gifts. I've entitled it, And in the Body, that is, in the Body of Christ, and in the Body Experience. And we're on our final installment of that. And it's sort of an addendum. We're not going to be necessarily in 1 Corinthians 12, although we're referring to a number of things there that we've studied, but an addendum in the sense of... Uh, taking uh, these broad generalities of, of uh, gifts and applying them specifically to us. So, so you know, how, how, what, what do these gifts mean specifically for me about how I'm going to serve or function within the body of Christ? We're going to try to answer some of those questions uh, today. But before we do that, let's pray together and uh, hope everything's going great for you. And uh, let's just thank God for that and ask for his help. God, we thank you for the blessings you bring into our lives. We thank you, God, whether, whether we're enjoying those blessings or whether they're trials, Lord, they're still blessings because you cause everything to work together for good. Uh, God, we pray um, that you would open our eyes to your word. These are your words, God. You're speaking to us. Help us to understand what you're saying. Help us to grow by it, Lord. Uh, as we uh, sow your seed, the seed of your word, Lord, we pray it would land directly in our hearts as you intended. Thank you. God, uh, thank you for those that are, that are gathered together and those that will gather together over this study. God, I pray you to open their eyes and teach them. Uh, turn them into what you want them to be, God, through this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So like I said, as an addendum, we're going to be considering uh, some more specific application of our gifts. Spiritual gifts are broad generalities uh, uh, to the specific places uh, where we fit into the framework of the body of Christ. There's not a complete list. We've already talked about that given to us in the New Testament. So if we add up all the gifts, we basically only get 17 or 18 gifts in the New Testament. So is that the only ministries that there are? We've got millions of people who are a part of the body of Christ globally, and there's only 17, 18 ministries. Well, uh, number one, I think I said, if you recall, uh, I think there's more gifts than that. I really do. And I think there possibly could be combinations of those gifts within each, each believer. But uh, gifts, are, again, are, are sort of generalities. They only answer a single question, and the question is what? What, what has God gifted me to do? Uh, but there's a lot of other questions left unanswered, like uh, how will I do that gift? When? To whom? Under what circumstances? Uh, these are all questions that, that need to be answered for me to be able to find my specific calling. Okay, yes, a gift is a calling, but how does that exactly work out in me? I'm a unique person, and as a unique person, that gift has a unique application. And we referred several times back about the whole puzzle pieces. Each puzzle, uh, the millions of, of puzzle pieces of the body of Christ, each have a specific fate place that they fit because God has made them specifically for that purpose. What is that? One of the best ways to have that I've seen to begin answering those questions, not fully answering, because again, we have to just submit ourselves to the Spirit in His direction. But, but one of the ways to help us at least start thinking in the direction of that process is to use an acrostic called SHAPE, S-H-A-P-E, SHAPE. S stands for spiritual gifts, H stands for heart, A stands for uh, abilities, what are the abilities that you and I have? Uh, I have different ones than you have. P for personality, E for experiences. We're going to be breaking down those different thing, parts of the acrostic to see uh, what specifically our shape is. God has gone out of his way to demonstrate how he um, loves uniqueness. He's made us all special. Not a single one of us is exactly the same. I have an identical twin, and yet he and I are even different. Uh, we have... Uh, none of us look exactly the same, even though I have an identical twin. We're not identical in every sense, sense of the word. Uh, uh, we have different DNAs. We have different. Uh, we look different. We we uh, have different fingerprints. Add to that mix, different spiritual gifts, different hearts, different abilities, different you know, personalities, different experiences, and the message becomes pretty clear that when it comes to the body of Christ. There, the, the number of ministries and specific applications of ministries and applications of spiritual gifts are as, are as unique as the individuals who possess them. 
So as many as there are unique individuals, so there are unique applications of these spiritual gifts and unique spots for each one of us to fit within the the body of Christ. You have a place, and I have a place, and we have to find those places. So so let's consider this acrostic, shape, S-H-A-P-E. First of all, spiritual gifts, we've been spending weeks together just as a review. Uh, Your spiritual gift is a part of your shape, if you will, where, where you fit in this puzzle. Uh, your, your shape, your, 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 your spiritual gift, your uh, spiritual gifts are grace gifts given, us, given to us at the point of salvation. These gifts are given to us not, to, not as something for us to unwrap and uh, enjoy, but instead for us to unwrap and give away to the body of Christ. They're our obligation to the body, spiritual gift is. It's your job. It's your service. You do not benefit directly from your spiritual gift. You benefit indirectly as you bless others through the gift that God has given you. But, but uh, and like I said, we spend a lot of time on these spiritual gifts, but the question remains, how will you apply this gift? When, where, to whom, under what circumstances? And we'll find the answers to those as we work through our acrostic together. So the second letter of shape is the letter H. It refers to our heart. The Bible describes the heart as the source of our motivations. For this reason, we have to guard, Scripture says, our hearts. Notice Proverbs 4.23. Watch over your heart, literally guard it, with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. You better be careful with your heart. The heart is the center of who you are. It's out of our hearts that flow our motivations. Guard our hearts. Our hearts are the most real part of us. Again, Proverbs 27. As in water, a face reflects the face. So I can look in water when it's calm and see what I look like, in other words. So the heart of a person reflects the person. It's who you really are. It's who you really are. We can put it on a facade uh, we can act and act, but when it really gets, gets down to where we reveal our hearts, then we know who you are. That's who you really are. It's not who you want us to think you are. It's not who you think you are necessarily, but it's what comes out of the heart. In fact, out of our heart comes all that we do, all that we say, all that we think. Here's Jesus using it in the negative sense of the sin that comes from us. Where does it come from? <coughs> Excuse me, it comes from the heart. Notice for out of the heart come evil thoughts out of our heart. You know, I mean, it's not talking about the, the organ in your body, of course. I hope you know that. But the center of, of, our, of, our, of our existence. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, acts of adultery, other immoral acts, uh, thefts, false testimonies, slanderous statements. It's out of the heart. If, if, I'm, if at the heart I'm a sinful, evil person, that will come out. If at the heart I'm a person who surrendered to God, that will come out. Heart matter. What, what is a heart? What, what, do we, what happens there? Our hearts reveal our passion, and it is from our hearts that we serve God. So, so now that we've come to Christ, I've placed my faith in Jesus as my personal Savior. He saved me. He's redeemed me. He's given me a new heart. And out of the heart now comes my service to God. Hear what this says in Ephesians 6. Serve, it says, not by way of eye service, as people pleasers, not, not the way I should work, just because watching to see if people are watching me, but as, how should I serve? As slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from where? From the heart. See, it's from the heart that comes my motivation to service. It's a part of my shape of how God has shaped me to serve and fit within the body of Christ. When we do what God has wired us to do, number one, we'll do it good, we'll do it well. Number two, we'll love it. When we serve God from the heart, we'll do it well, and we'll love it. So figure out what you love to do, what God has given you the heart to do, and then do it for his glory. So first of all, spiritual gifts, S, and then H, heart, and then the next letter, A, abilities. What are your abilities? The third area that determines our shape is these abilities. Abilities differ from gifts. Uh, the spiritual gifts are given as a result of our spiritual birth, whereas abilities are typically understood as something that we receive at physical birth. Uh, spiritual gifts are unique to the body of Christ, whereas abilities are given broadly, uh, not just of Christians. God gives abilities to everyone. But, but understand this, if it's, if it's a good thing, <coughs> if it's a good ability, the Scripture says it comes from God. James 1, 17, take a look with me. <clears> Thank <throat> you. 
<clears throat> James 1.17, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. There you go. Coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadows. Uh, what are your abilities? So not only what your spiritual gifts are, uh, in the sense that certainly God gave you those, but your abilities. Also, you should say, God has given these to me. God expects me to use them uh, for his kingdom. What, what are you good at uh, uh, beyond uh, spiritual gifts? Are you good at math? I'm just the broad generalities. Math, maybe? Music? Uh, athletics? Uh, mechanical ability? <coughs> Singing? Excuse me, I'm still <coughs> getting over something here. So I got a little catch in my throat. Uh, writing, uh, making money. I'm just writing down generalities here, but, but uh, what are you good at? Scripture's clear. Whatever we do, we should be doing it to the glory of God, right? So it's not just in these spiritual gifts I should be serving God. It's also in these everyday abilities, if we could possibly say that. Not that everybody has all these abilities necessarily. God has a place where our special abilities can shine for his glory. Your abilities are a strong indicator of what God wants you to do. What you're able to do, what you're able to do, your abilities, you should be doing for his church. You should be doing for the Lord. So I have abilities that I only apply to the secular world. Well, really? I thought this was everything was spiritual. Indeed it is. So our third area that determines our shape is our abilities. The fourth area is our personalities. Personalities play a big role. They do. Some are introverts, some are extroverts, some are like routine, others like variety. Some are feelers, others are thinkers. God uses all personalities. An example in the scriptures we have of the Bible characters of God using different personalities to affect different ministries. Peter, of course, was always speaking his mind, so that's what happens. He's the first spokesman for the church. Paul was an intellectual and was very bold. God uses him right down the line of his personality. John was more of a mystic, so he uses John to write a book like the book of Revelation. Um, <coughs> Jeremiah was a very emotional person, and so we have lamentations in the book of Jeremiah, both of which you find him weeping over the nation because it's a picture of how God's heart was broken over the nation that he was having to punish. Uh, Abraham was a fearful person. God used that. Joshua was a person who needed constant reassurance. God used that. God used every personality type for his glory. The same is true with your personality. Your personality is part of your shape. Your personality is part of where you fit in the body of Christ. It's not just your giftedness in the sense of spiritual gifts, but it's also these other things, your ability, your personality, your, your, your heart. <coughs> All these things come together to determine where you fit. Excuse me. As an example, let's say I have two people with the gift of evangelism. One of them is an introvert. The other one is an extrovert. The, the way they work out that same gift, both cases from the Spirit of God, <coughs> the way that works out, you'd be dependent upon their personalities. An introvert is going to be more on a one-on-one -on -one basis as far as sharing their faith. Is concerned. Whereas an extrovert may be speaking to large crowds. God using, in both cases, <coughs> their personalities. We all minister best in character. So what is your character? Within the limits of your personality, and that's the place that God has you. Now we're down to our final area that determines our shape. And that final one, E, stands for our experiences. What are or what have been your experiences? Where did you grow up? What were your family experiences? What's your uh, job-related experiences, your educational, your vocational experiences, your spirit? How has, how has God used you? God, how has God revealed himself to you spiritually? How has he used you for his spiritual work already? These are all experiences that, that I believe God will use uh, in helping you find your place, <coughs> your spot in the body of Christ. What were, here's a, an important one, your painful experiences. God uses those. So he's carried you through a very painful experience. I've seen many times, many cases, where a person who went through a very painful experience, they become the best minister 
for another person to go who goes through those things. The best one to reach that person, the best one who knows what they're going through, is the person who's already been through it. They, God takes the bad stuff, we know that, right? <coughs> We've already said that, and turns it into good things. Here's one of the ways he does it, is he uses my bad stuff to help somebody else. We know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. We believe that. We believe that. Part, part of what shapes us is our experiences, sometimes negative things. Even so, God uses those to equip us to help others. Only you can be you. Only you can fit in the place that God has you. No one else can. You have a unique shape, a unique heart, a unique ability, unique personality, unique experiences, unique, unique giftedness on top of all that, and you're a unique person. God has a place for you. Find that place and fill it. Let's pray together. God, I thank you that you have made us unique, special shape to serve your body. Help us, first of all, to reveal the great responsibility that there is of filling that place, fitting in the puzzle, and not leaving it a blank spot. Help us not to be pew warmers. We just come to church, and all we're, we're here is just to get stuff. Instead, help us to be servants, God. Coming and saying, how can I serve? How can I help? How can I support? What place can I fill? How, how can I augment the ministry of the body of Christ? How can I undergird the ministry of, of the Great Commission that we should be teaching and preaching and reaching people and baptizing them? God, how, how can I do that? God, I pray that the burden of that, the desire of that, or the heart for that would be upon each one of us. Thank you, God, for this time, for the opportunity we've had to study these spiritual gifts. I pray you continue to bless us as we make our way through 1 Corinthians. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for visiting. Find us at www.islandbaptistchurch.org.